Hey there, fellow gunmen. You sometimes ask yourself whether or not that shiny revolver on the shelf might actually be a dud. Well, you're in the right place, because today we're diving into six revolvers you should never buy. Yep, you heard that right. Not all revolvers are created equal. Sure, some might catch your eye with their fancy looks and feel like a dream in your grip, but when push comes to shove, they might just leave you high and dry at the range or, God forbid, when you're staring down trouble. We're breaking down the details on why these six specific models might just be more trouble than they're worth. Without further ado... Number 6. Rom Gesellschaft RG10 Ever heard of a Saturday night special? If it sounds like jargon from another era, it's because it is. A Saturday night special is a collective term for all cheaply made handguns, usually with less than stellar construction and reliability, and often made from lower quality materials like zinc alloy or zamac. These guns were the go-to for common criminals from decades ago because they were incredibly affordable. The Rom Gesellschaft RG10 is a classic example of a Saturday night special. Although many such specials were semi-autos, the RG10 is a revolver. Crafted primarily from pot metal, its construction is hardly something to boast about. Back in the 1960s, you could snag one of these for about 10 bucks. Starkly cheaper than a $600 Smith & Wesson. The RG-10 chambered in 22 short and capable of a 6-round volley might not seem like much. Despite the 22 short being an underdog in the ammo world, it packs enough punch, roughly 80 foot-pounds of force at the muzzle, to outdo most non-lethal guns. Surprisingly, despite its obscurity, 22 short ammo isn't that hard to find. However, don't let the specs fool you. The RG-10's reliance on inferior materials like pot metal leads to notorious unreliability. Over time, the metal fatigue affects the revolver's structural integrity, especially with repeated use, causing parts to loosen and the timing of the cylinder to go haywire. When a revolver cylinder isn't timed correctly, well, it's about as useful as a paperweight. So, while the RG-10 might sound like a bargain, it's likely more trouble than it's worth. Number 5, Taurus Model 605. The Taurus Model 605 has carved out its niche as a budget-friendly revolver since its debut in 1995. Known for its compact frame and robust design, this 357 Magnum snub-nosed revolver is available in both 2 and 3 inch barrel lengths. Commonly found in stainless steel, black oxide, or Cerakote finishes. Despite its appeal for personal defense due to a manageable price tag around $406, the 605 is not without its drawbacks. Technical challenges have been noted with this model, particularly in its mechanical reliability under heavy use. Users have reported issues with the cylinder locking mechanism, which can be problematic for precision shooting. The locking issue generally stems from defects in the spring or the push rod, sometimes necessitating a trip to the gunsmith for a more robust fix. The revolver's firing reliability also comes into question, with misfires reported during use. A few documented cases trace back to poor ammunition quality, while others were caused by issues within the firing pin mechanism, requiring meticulous maintenance to ensure functionality. Additionally, the 605's heavy and long trigger pull has been a point of contention for some users, potentially affecting shot accuracy and overall handling. Despite these concerns, the Tor 605's price point keeps it popular among some firearm enthusiasts. While it may fit the bill for casual users or those new to revolvers, its noted reliability issues under stress or extensive use might rank it lower on the list for more experienced shooters or those seeking a more dependable defensive revolver. Number 4. Rossi Model 971 Let's chat about the Rossi Model 971, a revolver that packs a punch and brings along a few quirks. Manufactured from 1996 through 1998, and originally imported by Interarms, this revolver is designed somewhat like a Smith & Wesson K-frame, but sports a J-frame-sized grip, which offers a weird handling experience. 
Available in 357 Magnum, the 971 is both potent and versatile, capable of firing 38 special rounds as well. The Rossi 971 features a 6.5-inch cast steel barrel and an 8-shot cylinder, which is notably robust for its class. Its ergonomic rubber grip enhances comfort and control, which is critical during extended shooting sessions. This model is praised for its accuracy, thanks to its substantial barrel length and well-designed sight system that includes a fixed rear sight and a ramp front sight. However, there's a reason it's on this list. It has been noted for potential reliability issues, particularly concerning cylinder lockup and timing, a critical aspect for the safe and accurate functioning of any revolver. These issues can affect the revolver's performance, particularly under rapid firing or when used extensively over time. Priced around 429 bucks, the Rossi 971 offers an affordable entry into the world of Magnum revolvers, but it may require some hands-on attention or customization to reach its full potential. With a smooth trigger pull and a sturdy build, the Rossi 971 might sound like a solid revolver for some, but you should stay away from it because of all its mechanical issues. Number 3. Older Smith & Wesson Model 686 The Smith & Wesson Model 686, a classic choice among revolver enthusiasts, has been revered for its robust construction, but the older model isn't without its quirks. Notably, some users have encountered issues with split forcing cones, particularly when firing heavily loaded 357 Magnum rounds. This problem has been significant enough to require repairs or even replacements of parts, disrupting the otherwise smooth experience expected from such a reputable firearm. It's built with a stainless steel finish, known for its durability and resistance to corrosion. It features a 7-round capacity, adjustable white outline rear sights, and is often praised for its custom grips and excellent balance. However, its handling of high-pressure loads has occasionally led to mechanical failures in the forcing cone area, a critical point where the bullet moves from the cylinder into the barrel. The high pressure and heat can wear down this area over time, leading to microscopic cracks that develop into bigger cracks that eventually lead to the forcing cone splitting in half. While these are well-known issues with older models, the newer Model 686 remains popular due to its reliability, precision, and the backing of Smith & Wesson's lifetime service warranty. It's an excellent choice for both new and experienced shooters. Now, if you happen to own or you're considering buying an older Model 686, just be proactive with maintenance, and also be mindful of ammunition choices to help mitigate these issues and extend the revolver's life and performance. Number 2, Smith & Wesson Model 340PD There's actually nothing wrong with the Smith & Wesson Model 340PD in terms of reliability. It's advertised as Smith & Wesson's lightest J-frame revolver that can handle the 357 Magnum without breaking a sweat. Honestly, you'd be hard-pressed to find any revolver as light and compact as this one. Smith & Wesson holds the unique position of using a scandium alloy for their frames, thanks to exclusive rights on the necessary processing technique. The Model 340PD combines a scandium alloy frame with a titanium alloy cylinder, being it's super lightweight yet capable of firing 357 magnum rounds, a real testament to Smith & Wesson's engineering process. So, why is it on this list? Well, let me tell you about the kick it packs. The 357 magnum is known for its recoil, but usually it's somewhat tamed in heftier steel revolvers. Not so much with the Model 340PD. This tiny beast weighs just about 11.8 ounces, and while it's engineered to withstand the pressures of the 357 Magnum, firing a box of these rounds is a brutal experience. The recoil can be punishing, leading to significant discomfort in your palm and wrist. Despite its outstanding durability and convenience for carrying all day, thanks to its lightweight, the trade-off in terms of recoil might not be worth it for everyone. Sure, it's great for concealment, but I think Smith & Wesson might have hit the sweet spot by just sticking to 38 Special Plus P for this model. Still effective, but without the harsh kick. For those who don't mind a bit of a challenge, or even enjoy it, Model 340PD might just be your kind of revolver. But if you're like me and value your shooting comfort, you might find this model a pain to shoot. Quite literally. Number 1, Smith & Wesson Model 350 
So, you haven't heard of the Smith & Wesson Model 350? You're not alone. This newcomer slipped into the lineup under the radar in August of 2022. It's the latest addition to Smith & Wesson's beefy X-Frame series. Joining big bore options like the Model 500 and Model 460 XBR. The Model 350 is a bit different in that it's chambered for the 350 Legend, a new rifle cartridge from Winchester. The 350 Legend is interesting in that it's a straight walled cartridge that packs a punch, though it's not quite up to par with heavy hitting rifle rounds. It's mainly geared for deer hunting in the States with specific hunting regulations in its optimal form a 20 inch rifle barrel. The 350 Legend bullet travels at 2,100 feet per second and delivers a robust 1,762 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. But again, that's out of a rifle barrel. From the Model 350's 7.5-inch barrel, things are underwhelming. You're looking at speeds around 1,551 feet per second and about 908 foot-pounds of energy. That's about half of its potential, which is a bummer, given the revolver's massive size and the hefty price tag of $1,679. When you stack it up against something like the Ruger Super Red Hawk and 454 Casul, which also sports a 7.5-inch barrel, but costs less at $1,469 and weighs a more manageable 53 ounces, the Model 350's appeal wanes a ton.